I hope this to be the first of uh, many videos that I'm going to make. Just going over the how to do this metal uh, aluminum scratch art is what I call it. Uh, I've got one in the background there that I've got to do some repairs on because I dropped some stuff on it. But uh, um, yeah, I've got a couple examples on my channel of uh, of this stuff, but. Um, this is just going to be the first video that is just going to it's going to go over the basics like what you need for tools, the material and you know, simple things, gloves. Of course, I don't have any. There we go. This is key, safety glasses, always safety glasses. Don't need anybody going blind doing this stuff cuz <coughs> cuz uh you're using mainly um Dremel bits to do this that are wire Dremel bits, so they're various shapes of a uh, bunch of wires. So those little wires will come off and you don't need to stick one in your eye. That would be a, <coughs> a terrible deal. So to start off, um, I have, at this point, I've, I've been doing this for a while, so I've got, I've gone through a bunch of different Dremel bits. Um, this is just just some of them. And these are mo mainly uh, things I don't use anymore because I've just been experimenting. I don't know anyone else. I've yet to find anyone else really doing um, the, this artwork to the level that I had envisioned. Um, most, of the, most of the aluminum stuff is, is it's not super detailed. Right, and I just had this vision of being able to get really three-dimensional, uh, detailed depth doing aluminum, and so uh, try to keep this straightforward on this video. I'm just going to go over the basics. Gloves. Um, these are great. These Tillman. Uh, they're actually for doing pig welding, um, which I have. Uh, I do some pig welding, but uh, I found that these things are really, they give you a lot of dexterity, they give you some feel, so you can feel what's happening with the tool. Um, they're soft, so they're not scratching your aluminum as you're working it, and uh, you just keep them clean, right, you know, make sure that they're clean before you start your, your stuff for the day, and uh, that there's nothing you know, burrs or anything, and you haven't picked up any metal shrapnel or anything, and, uh, yeah, these are good ones. Um, all these safety glasses. These things, uh, I, I have, I've known too many people, uh, my neighbor, for instance, was one guy who was, uh, uh, he was making knives, and so he's making them to sell at, like, you know, swap meets and fairs or whatever, and he had one, uh, come off his, uh, uh, sander, ricochet off the wall, stab him in the eye. I don't know that the safety glasses would stop that, but at least it would give you a chance. Um, these things, you're always having these tiny little pieces of, uh, wire come off. So, don't even fire up your Dremel or your grinder or anything without safety glasses on. I buy these by the case from Amazon. You can get them cheap on Amazon. These ones are the these buy different ones all the time because whatever's on sale these are George Tech um, doesn't really matter as long as you have a lot of them and you sprinkle them around so that let me turn this pan off um, so that they're everywhere so you never have an excuse for not having your safety glasses on just sprinkle them around your shop and that way you're not ever tempted to sit well, what I do is I like to sit something down and forget where I sat it, so uh, I'm always getting frustrated by looking for some tool or whatever. Safety glasses I have laying everywhere, so I never have an excuse to put them on. Sorry about that. I've got my pan set up in the fireplace and kick on when it reaches a certain temperature. So, um, next, your, no, hold on. This 
this is your, these are your tools that you're mainly working with. Or really, you just need one. But with the amount of stuff that I do, I I end up getting frustrated having to swap stuff all the time. So this right here is your 90 degree um, angle for your Dremel. So it changes obviously from spin going horizontally to this direction. This is essential. Gotta have that. The, uh, the cordless battery power, just don't waste your time. You can get a couple of these 4,000 these Dremels, a uh, couple of these 90 degree angles. They're accessories that come with them or you can get after the fact. And, uh, and then you need this. You need one of these that allow you, the whips that allow you to, what I do is I hang this up above and then I have this for doing really fine uh, detailed work. Um, a lot less bulky than this. Gives you the ability to get in there and make little tiny rocks and whatever. So the main Dremel bit that you're going to use um, are these cups like this and the flat wire brushes like this. So cup. And these come in different sizes and you'll get all the different sizes that you can, you know, big down to the tiniest you can get. And they don't make them small enough, to be honest with you. And then these guys. So uh, and same thing on this, they come in different sizes. Uh, I really prefer the ones with this copper colored shank on them. They uh, shaft, they uh, I think they're finer wire on them or something. They work pretty good. Uh, these right here are good, but you have to modify them to make them work. So I'll show you how to do that later. So this is your material. Uh, it's just aluminum sheets, right? So you get them in a you buy them by like a four by eight aluminum sheet, or you can buy them four by four from your metal supply house, you know they sell the supply houses are going to be selling tubing and, and uh, I-beams and all that type of stuff. Well they sell sheets of steel, they sh sell sheets of aluminum and that's what you want is a sheet of aluminum. I've tried several different uh, thicknesses and gauges and what I ended up really settling in on was 336. So that is uh, 30 seconds, seems to be uh, 16th of an inch, is way too flimsy. This is 16th. I made a mistake last time, just to try it. It's way too flimsy. But I can show you this real quick. When you get these, you're going to get these sheets of aluminum, you're going to have some guy's going to go out to the yard and pull it for you, right? Um, I request to go out there and look at the sheet before he just brings one up on a forklift to load on my truck because it's got scratches on it. This is this is the one side. This is the this is the good side, right? So you get one side not uh, not covered in plastic. You get the other side covered in plastic. If it has a scratch on it, it's aluminum scratched. You do not want your aluminum scratched because that just adds so much more work for you to try to um, to try to get that aluminum ground down to the depth of that scratch to make it go away. So if you just picture a scratch in a, in a big flat surface like this, you've got to grind away all the material around that scratch to make it disappear. And then you got to feather that out. So it's not... Uh, it's, w it's definitely worth the effort to... Um, go out there with the guy and just say, hey look, I'm using this for artwork, I just need to make sure there's no scratches on it. And just double check. Because most of those yard guys, they don't give a shit. They're just, 
not I'm not saying anything bad about them, but they're just there doing their job, you know. They're just yanking sheets of metal and putting it in the back of people's trucks or whatever. Their concern is not what happens to it after that. So that's what it looks like when you peel it off. Nice and shiny, clean, ready to be sanded, which is what we're gonna get into next. So to prep this stuff. tried something failed but it's a good example just to show you what we're looking for on this aluminum the other tool you need is a random a random orbital sander right so this thing does exactly what the name implies it spins but it also oscillates so it creates a random pattern so there's no distinct line like a belt sander or or just with a uh, an angle grinder they leave very distinct directional scratches this leaves nothing uh, directional it's all random so uh, what do I got on here so I got 120 grit uh, sandpaper so I've tried a bunch of different sandpapers um, different different uh, different grits on the sandpaper it turns out that uh, all of these that I bought purchased uh, were are way too fine if you sand it down too fine you just end up creating a really smooth surface which uh, you'll see that it's not beneficial to what we're trying to do here because when you're doing this, all you're doing is creating, you can think of it as scratches that reflect the light. So a vertical scratch, well this is assuming that the, your light's coming from above. If you have light coming from some other direction, then you need to take that into consideration when you're making your piece. But it, most situations is coming from above. So vertical scratches like this are dark. Horizontal scratches are white or light. They reflect that light back into your eyes more. And then everything else that you vary in between that is basically just shading, right? So to start that out, you want to have a, a blank surface or a canvas, right? So. that I'm not going to use, right? So I do my measurements on the back sheet. 
and then I set it on something that's not going to scratch it through that plastic, and when I cut it, it's pulling, the way the blade moves, it's, it's coming at an angle like this, right? So it's scooping that metal up, so you're going to get your lip of uh, metal that's the aluminum that doesn't get quite cut because it's not a laser, right? So it's it's literally grabbing some aluminum and yanking it out of there. So it leaves a little edge. But if you do it on the if you do it from the front side, you end up with that edge on the front, which is harder to to clean up, and you just we're more worried about damaging the the face of this thing. So now you can just take your grinder, your angle grinder, something like this with a you know a disc like a flat disc on it, right? And just run it down the side. Safety glasses. So you just run that down the edge there to knock that little sharp edge off so you don't yeah, you'll you'll see. Like you'll just just knock down the edge till it's smooth enough. Camper the front edge or bevel it or whatever you want to call it. You know, depends on what you're doing. So anyway, that's kind of the prep that you need to do before you start on this. And this is the debut of of the new camera, so I'm pretty excited about that. Because before I was just doing it with an iPhone and the audio was terrible. So, yeah, I'm excited to see how it turns out. Okay, so you take... Oh, shoot. I need to find one that I can use for the Okay, so you look at this terrible, this thing right here. It's got little bits of wire sticking out on all the sides. Um, Oh, as a side note, I apologize. People have commented on my hands before. So if you don't, if you just don't like, I mean, my hands are always messed up. It's calloused. I always have scratches that are in some stage of healing. Um, is that the trigger for you? You shouldn't wash these because you're going to see a lot of my beat up hands. So, apologize. Alright, so you've got this uh, bit here that is chewed up, right? It's all gnarly. I'm not going to be able to get used to that. So this new camera that I just got, like when I look at it, when I move, it's opposite of what I think I'm moving. That's going to take a little bit. I'm all new to this shit. So, alright, here's how you fix these things. Turn the baby on. So, what you do is you run this up against it with it running, with the gimbal running, and this, and you gently just ooze into it. You'll start to see a little spark here and there, and you gently, gently get closer and closer and closer until you're almost touching, and you take all those ones that are just sticking out off, and then you do the same thing from the backside, right? Um, when you do the backside, a lot of times what you have to do is move this bit a little further out, like further than what you normally have it in there. Normally you just shove it in as far as you can. Um, to do this, because of the width, this, the, the locking mechanism on here gets in the way. So you, take, you move it out a little further and then you do that backside and you clean those things up. And you just take them all off until you've got a nice uh, a nice wheel that doesn't have any little pieces sticking out that are going to leave random marks on you. That's what you're trying to, to get rid of with this, the little random marks. So you want to be able to control this chaos as much as possible. Alright, well I think that's it for the first video. Thank you for your time. I'll be making another one.
first video. We're going to do some more. Uh, oh, I think over this. This little guy. I'll go over on the next video. Yeah, the three bits are really neat. Three type styles. Flat. ones. Yeah. And then these ones you're going to get, they look like they look like this when you get them, right? But you're going to modify them to achieve something that we want to achieve. So and then you need this guy, right? It's all over that. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Hopefully, I'm <laughs> not sure what that was. Um, yeah, I, I hope uh, I hope what I'm going to be doing in the future is beneficial for people. Um, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff off watching YouTube. There's a lot of great people out there doing videos on. You know, I've learned how to uh, weld and uh, sew. I got an industrial sewing machine for sewing you know, sew my gear back together and, and uh, um, I just so much stuff. I just learned so much stuff from all these awesome people and I, this is something that I think that I have that um, no one else is really doing um, and so I want to just share it. You know, just, I'm not the, the most talented person, um, but I have been working at this for several years. I, I What I lack in talent, I make up for perseverance. I will just keep hammering and hammering away until I get better at something. And so what I'd like to do is pass along that knowledge so that, you know, this, you, you know, you people out there with better, more talent than I have can stand on my shoulders and just take this further. I'd like to, I'd love to see some amazing stuff come from people. So, um, okay, thanks. Do some more. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Hopefully, I'm <laughs> not sure what that was. Um, yeah. I, I hope. Uh, I hope what I'm going to be doing in the future is beneficial for people. Um, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff off watching YouTube. There's a lot of great people out there doing videos on. You know, I've learned how to uh, weld and uh, sew. I got an industrial sewing machine for sewing, you know, sewing my gear back together, and, and uh, um, God, just so much stuff. I've just learned so much stuff from all these awesome people, and I, this is something that I think that I have that um, no one else is really doing, um, and so I want to just share it. You know, just I'm not the the most talented person, um, but I have been working at this for several years. I, I, what I lack in talent, I make up for perseverance. I will just keep hammering and hammering away until I get better at something. And so what I'd like to do is pass along that knowledge so that, you know, this, you, you know, you people out there with better, more talent than I have can stand on my shoulders and just take this further. I'd like to, I'd love to see some amazing stuff come from people. So, um, okay, thanks.